you know, what is it this morning is that the um, if you have questions, note them down, write them down on piece of paper and submit it to me. I get, you can either give it to Srinthirla, uh, Kamazambala, or you, you can keep it on my table. The best would be if you give them to them, they will hand it over to me directly. And I'll get a chance to go through go through these. If there are some questions which are repeating, uh, we can then sort that out. So uh, this is one thing. Okay, um, last time we we left at which verse of the in praise of Dharma Dadu? Ah, uh, page. We finished 17. Okay. So now we are on 18. So, but we need to keep in mind that we all have the Buddha nature. And Buddha nature, um, what it says is that Buddha nature, they are, they do two kinds. One is, anybody remembers two kinds of Buddha nature? Huh? Anyone who remembers the two kinds of Buddha nature? Yes, Lamale. Natural Buddha nature, probably phrasing Buddha nature. Did, he, did, we, did, did we do this here in this class? Are you sure? Huh? What, yes? Not sure? Okay, sure, we didn't do it. Okay. Thank you, Ashwin. Okay. So the, now what we do now it becomes a little easy for us, given that we are introduced to the the uh, the true nature of the mind in the form of in the form of the very clear pure mind, and in the form of emptiness. Um, we learn both. So because of this, it's now easy to explain the two body the the two. What is that? Buddha natures. So we all have the two Buddha natures, and uh, these two are related to related to the the ground for each of us, each of each one of us to become enlightened, to become a Buddha. So the the um, the two Buddha, Buddha natures. The first one is known as proliferating Buddha nature. Proliferating Buddha nature. And the other one is known as a natural Buddha nature. Proliferating Buddha nature in Tibetan is Gegurik. Gegurik in Tibetan. And the natural Buddha nature is Rangshin Nerik. The two Buddha natures. Okay. Uh, first, let's say the proliferating Buddha nature. What is proliferating Buddha nature? The, to give you a simple example, and to give a simple example, let's say that the uh, with, the, with the water, however dirty the water is, however dirty the water is, the true nature of the water is very pure, very clean. Okay, how many of you agree with me? Yes. Okay, however dirty the water is, the true nature of the water is very clean. And I say anybody who likes to explain how the true nature of the water is always clean, how? Quick, quick, um, to make sure that everybody hears you and the, uh, okay, Chambala, then Chambala. Okay, which water you take? Yamuna. Okay, have you seen that? <laughs> This is never saw Yamuna River, and he is now blaming Yamuna River as impure. Right? Okay, thank you. By the way, how many of you know Yamuna River? How many of you does, how many do not know Yamuna River? Recent? Okay, how many of you know Yamuna River? We can't you know that? Nice, clean water. No, no. Huh? Sewage? <laughs> okay. Are you sure? Are you sure? Is it sewage? Okay. 
um, all the civ many of the civilians are connected to that. Yeah, that's very dirty. That's true. Okay. So what this Shambhala is saying is that the um, this dirty water, when you subject this to purification processes, like reverse osmosis, ultrafiltration, then the dirt, pollutants, filth, they're all extracted. Then what comes out is very clean. And then you can sell it. We, all the bottled water that we get from the shops, they're like this. Okay, so that is the... Okay, how many from Singapore residents? Singapore, only one. Huh? Two. Only two. Okay. Singapore, the Singaporeans, they're very smart. What they do is, they first buy the impure water. They purify it. They sell it back. And very expensive. They bought it very cheap. They purify it and sell it back. You're getting it? Okay. So it's amazing. So from this what we see how we the water is, the true nature water is so clean. Number one. So what is that pure water like? When the dirt is removed, the pure water is that impermanent or imp the permanent? The the pure water. After removing the dirt, so the pure water comes out, is that permanent or impermanent? Raise hands. Raise hands. Raise hands. Raise hands. Oh, yep. Permanent. Permanent. Okay. The. Ah. Uh, impermanent. Thomas, your name. Philip. Thomas. Yes. Here, your name. Michael. Yes. Okay. Philip says it is impermanent. Anyone else? Okay, how many of you would say, Atin Shambhala, what do you think? Impermanent. How many of you would say that this pure water that, that comes out is permanent? Resents. One, two, three, four, five. Hey, Thamula. I do not see to listen well. The pure water that came out after the purification. You're getting it? So that pure water, be very, have a very good ear to listen to. The pure water, I do not say the nature of the pure water. I do not say that. I said the pure water they came, that came out after the puri purification process. Is that permanent or impermanent? How many of you would say impermanent resents? Okay, now many of you got the sense, All right? Okay. Those who said impermanent, give me a reason. Yes, Carl. Because it's composite. But please tell me more, because you, you are saying you are the you, you are bringing the logical reason, and as per the Buddha, all composite things are impermanent. So you give me a reason how it is impermanent. Explain it. In a common, the you know, common people's uh, the label or terms, it is made of molecules. So, so if it is made of molecules, why should it be? Why should it be impermanent? Anyone, anyone, okay, Rimbila, okay, if you add the dirt again, it'll be your, it'll become, but till that point, it's permanent. Till that is that is put till that point is permanent, right? Ah, okay. Anyone else? Vajula. Okay. Ah. If it is stagnated. In what way? Once it becomes pure, it is not stagnant. If it's stagnant, it's not pure. Yes.
okay so the what I'm looking for is as what Lisa said that is changing you know it's not permanent it's impermanent so changing so how is changing it's saying that the fact that it's made of it is is made of molecules molecules means the atoms h2o two hydrogen one oxygen combined together and formed the with the bones the the three the atoms are put together create one the molecule and these each of the atoms they have the atoms is made of nucleus and the electrons and the electrons are constantly in flux there this is a change so that is how the water however the pure it is as long as it is water is made of h2o set of therefore it is in constant flux of change are oh, you good it's impermanent now let's say that the why i'm trying to bring this up to you is that this pure water just imagine that the dirty water from the yamuna river taken and then you subject this to ultimate the purification process like reverse osmosis, ultra filtration, that very clean water comes out, and you look at it, it's so clean. Do you understand up to, to this point? Huh? Or your mind is somewhere else? What happened? Huh? People study for 10, 20, 30 years, it's not even 10 days. You're already tired. Huh? Particularly, Dawa is you know making me very happy, saying that yes, 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 yes. <laughs> okay, so uh, the um, so do you see that the water, this water after purification process, it becomes very clean. Yes, no. Be sympathetic. If you say yes, I'll be happy. If you don't say yes, I don't know that whether you understood or not. It becomes very clean. Yes, no good okay now this is clean in one sense in this sense so this purity that we see the water as so wow it's so clean meaning is pure that purity of the water that that pure water um that what we said is is impermanent right okay it exists in the eyes of ultimate analysis or conventional analysis the pure water because anything that exists, either it should be truth to the conventional analysis or it should be true to the ultimate analysis. This pure water is true to the conventional analysis, ultimate analysis. Huh? Omar? Conventional analysis, thank you. Okay, so it's, it's at the, that purity is on the conventional level analysis. So that purity, now apply this to your mind. Your mind also, if all the defilements are removed, mental defilements are removed, then a pure mind manifests. You're getting an extremely pure mind manifest, which is afraid of afflictive obscurations and corner option. That mind manifests. So that is impermanent or permanent. Mind should necessarily, all minds should necessarily be impermanent. You're getting it? No matter how pure the mind is, as long as it is a mind, it should necessarily be impermanent. So this very pure mind manifested after removing all the mental defilements, afflictive and conflict obscurations, this pure mind still remains as a, is also very, although very pure, but it's still impermanent in nature. Okay. Now, next question is that the, um, so this pure mind, this pure mind, um, the it exists as as real as truth with respect to conventional analysis or ultimate analysis with respect to conventional analysis you're getting it so now it's the same pure so which means that not purity we are seeing the purity on one level my your mind when mental deformities is removed it is so pure with pure mind with in the eyes of the conventional analysis you're getting it one level of purity now that level of purity which with respect to your mind with respect to your mind which is so pure in the eyes of the conventional analysis that pure mind is known as that pure mind is known as proliferating buddha nature 
that pure mind is known as that pure mind is the best example of the proliferating Buddha nature. You're getting it? Okay, now to like to extend a little more comprehensive that all the same that your the defiled mind defiled mind defiled mind which have the capa which which has the capacity to grow which has the capacity to improve defiled mind which has the capacity to go towards grow towards enlightenment those defilements are known as proliferating buddha nature you're getting it so proliferating buddha nature we can understand it the basic understanding is that this the how we do the mind is the true nature is so pure so this is basic idea with this in mind then the, the the feeling hope that we get is that oh even though my mind is very defiled still yet this mind can be improved, improved, can be purified. Okay, so what exactly is the meaning, complete meaning of the proliferating Buddha nature is, is uh, the, the defiled mind, a defiled mind which can improve towards enlightenment. A defiled mind which can improve towards enlightenment. Okay. Let's say, let's say self grasping ignorance. Is it proliferating Buddha nature? Huh? How many say, yeah, how many you say yes, resents? How many say no, resents? Okay, draw the thumb, why not? It is not pure, but what is the defiled mind? It is defiled. Pure, impure, and defiled. These two same. You getting it? So, what I the what what meaning did I give to you? What meaning? What meaning I gave for the proliferating Buddha nature? Remember? Okay, Dorothy Durin. Yes, yes. So, um, the say initially I said something. Your mind can be made so pure after all the defilements. So the purity manifests. That pure mind, I said, is the the uh, the problem with the nature. This is the first statement that I made. So with this understanding, then I made the full meaning. What's the meaning? A defiled mind which has the capacity to improve, improve, to become more pure, to become enlightened, towards enlightenment. So that is the proliferating Buddha nature. This is meaning. You're getting it? So with this mind, how many understood the meaning of the proliferating Buddha nature? Okay, is there anybody? Okay, Aishan, tell me what's the proliferating Buddha nature's meaning? Perfect, very good. How many heard what Aishan said? Good. Okay, now with this in mind, with this definition, I Come up with this point: self-grasping ignorance. Do you think it is a part? It is a mind. Do you think it is proliferating with the nature? Okay, the argaji. Yes, it is. This kid. Yes, and there's somebody who said yes. Somebody here. Okay, Subhashi. Yes. Okay. Okay. So the those who said yes, you think that self grasping ignorance become more and more better, self grasping ignorance, better, 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 and then finally become Buddha. Then full self grasping ignorance and become Buddha. Yes? No? This kid no? No? So which means the self grasping ignorance, as you as you purify it, self grasping it becomes it shrinks. It doesn't proliferate. Proliferate meaning multiply, increase. So self grasping ignorance shrinks, right? Okay, Argaji. Exactly. So the exactly, exactly. So the ignorance per se it shrinks. So Buddha nature increases. So ignorance is not Buddha nature. Ignorance shrinks. Yes. Yeah, so ignorance shrinks, and the Buddha nature which is accompanying that increases. Good. This could you agree? Good. 
And who is that somewhere here? Okay, Sabaji, you agree? Good. Okay, so self grasping ignorance, it is not Buddha Nisha because this is not good. Delete it. Right? Because you've never improved to become Buddha. Then what about self centered attitude? Self centered attitude. I am more important than you. <laughs> you are again. So that, that is Buddha Nisha or not? Proliferating Buddha Nisha or not? Tanish, what do you think? Self centered attitude. It is Buddha nature, it does it it improves, improves, improves and become Buddha. Or not? Huh? No? It's the same, it's the same. So as you purify the mind, self and energy shrinks. Instead of proliferating, it shrinks. Self and energy becomes less, 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 less. Right? Then our Im our impure mind. Our impure mind, right? Our impure mind, which is the capacity, does it have the capacity to improve to become Buddha? Yes. So there are impure mind in, let's say, for example, like today's my mind. Today's my mind is not too happy. So today's my mind, but it can become happier, 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 right? Okay. So the impure mind, which has the capacity to improve, progress towards enlightenment, that is known as proliferating Buddha nature. The idea is that. Idea is that the, the however impure the mind is, defiled the mind is, the if you remove the defilement, this mind can really manifest the perfect purity. And that period that pure mind is what? Convention to the ultimate truth. Huh? Hey, did you tell me? That pure mind is convention to the ultimate truth. Yes. Oh, because she, because she did not get extra sleep this morning. Otherwise, her mind is very smart. Today something happened. She did not get extra sleep this morning, right? Because the alarm worked well. Okay. This pure mind is a permanent impermanent. After remove the mental departments. Impermanent. We already said it before. You're getting it? Okay. It's impermanent. But it's very pure. So this purity can be explained on the conventional level also. You're getting it? There's a conventional truth. Now there's a purity that we talk of in the ultimate level also. So there is now this mind. This mind whose true nature is so pure whose true nature is so pure, even this mind is empty of inferencing existence, empty of objective existence, yes? So, that mind is empty of objective existence in the experience of the emptiness of this mind. You see, for example, say, your mind, you see there's whatever it is, like compassion or neutral mind or whatever, then you meditate on emptiness of this mind and this mind dissolves, like, like the flower dissolves, like the self dissolves, even this mind also dissolves. You're getting it? The impurities dissolve. On what level? In the eyes of ultimate truth. You're getting it? In the eyes of ultimate truth, everything related to the mind dissolves. So, it becomes absolutely pure in that sense. You're getting it? With this very ultimate, when subjecting the mind to ultimate analysis, everything, of the religious mind, they dissolve in the experience of the ultimate analysis. So, no stains left. You're getting it? Again, there's a connotation of purity, that it dissolves. All the impurities dissolve. All the religious mind dissolves. So, what is left? Nothing is left there in the expense of ultimate, in the experience of the emptiness of the mind. Nothing is left there. So, there's no stain left. There's also another level of understanding. The purity. So purity on the, which is a conventional truth, and purity on the ultimate truth, on the level of the ultimate truth too. So purity of the, the same, related to the purity of the mind, the defiled mind per se, which is the capacity to proliferate towards the perfect conventional purity, that is known as proliferating Buddha nature. And the emptiness of this proliferated mind is known as natural buddha nature natural so in the second 
In the first case, okay, first let me say this. Say the impure mind or the defiled mind, which has the capacity to improve to, towards enlightenment, that is known as proliferating Buddha nature. Let me repeat it. You wrote it already. Okay. Um, the impure mind, which has the capacity to improve towards enlightenment, is known as proliferating with the nature. And the emptiness of this emptiness of the proliferating Buddha nature is known as natural Buddha nature. Okay, okay, many hands are coming up. Dr. Thumb, tell me. Okay, this is a good question. Proliferating Buddha nature and subject to play alone mind are these two Includes mutually inclusive. Anyone? What do you think? Okay, let me put the question again. This is a very good question. Uh, proliferating Buddha nature and the subject of clear mind are these two mutually inclusive, which means that are these two synonymous? Do, do they mean the same? Anyone? What do you think? This is a good question. Philip, what do you think? Yes, okay, they think so. Yes, anyone else? What do you think? How many of you think that yes, perhaps yes, right? You may not be sure. You may say yes. Uh, some of you may say no, raise your hands. No, no, no. Okay, those who said no, why no? Okay, Mataji. Okay, so if I say, if I say, okay, now another thing that we're learning here, which is going to be extremely beneficial for all of us, is that if I say that, animate creatures, animate creatures meaning like animals, insects, human beings, animate creatures. Animate creature, animate creature and human being, these two are synonymous. If I say that, what would you say? Agree, not agree. Don't agree, resents, not agree, resents. Okay. How would you prove that how would you prove that this statement is wrong? Animate creature and human beings, these two are synonymous. How do you prove that this is wrong? Okay, Philip. Yes, this is a very precise way of doing it. When I say that these two are not the same, oftentimes you can give an example of one object which is some animate creature but not a human being. You're getting it? That's good enough to say that these two are not synonymous. Synonymous means whatever is a, the animate creature should necessarily be a human being, whereas a human being should necessarily be animate object, animate the creature or animate creature. If you can give an example, which is animate creature but not a human being, that is good enough to say that these two are not synonymous. Synonymous means, by the very definition, two things being A and B to be synonymous. Whatever is A should be B, whatever is B should be A. You have learned maths, right? In math, you have observed math, this is what you've learned. A equals B, B equals C, therefore A equals C. You're getting applied this. Okay. so. Those who said no, this is not synonymous, um, they say the best thing would be give me an example of something which is either A, not B, or B, not A. Anyone? Okay, then Shambhala. Okay, good. Okay, Tam. So, what then Shambhala is saying is that for some our impure mind. Our impure mind, um, the um, that is a proliferating Buddha nature. But because this is impure mind, with the capacity to grow to become an, uh, the enlightened. But this impure mind is not the subject clear clear mind because is subject clear light mind is a very subtle mind, and this impure mind that I have now is very gross. You getting it? 
okay this is how we should train we should practice if you can attend such classes with more inter interaction then your mind will really clear many of the as like the, the, the fogginess in our mind is in a way like the fogginess and the thinking and that has to be cleared through interactive participation very good okay so Mikhail okay that's a good point but but this what this is the separate question or the follow-up from the early one separate question hold it for some time because the last first finish do finish with this so the first part is done okay now second question okay this good question again so many good questions okay subject play that mind does it have stain or not this is a question Okay, anyone? Subject to clear that mind, does it have a stain or not? Anyone? Okay, subject to clear. Yes, Lisa. Okay. Um, the what Lisa is saying? Subject to clear mind is said to be the subtlest mind because of which it. I don't think to be on safe side. I don't think. Meaning, not saying, make, make, not making a statement, just saying a supposition. I don't think it is stained, right? This is Lisa's standpoint. It's not my standpoint. Okay, this kid. Don't worry, don't worry. Yes. Okay, Buddha's mind is still mind. It should be stained. Buddha's mind is subject to stain. Hey. There is exception, right? Okay, if you bring exception, which means that your statement is very weak. Okay, anyone else? Okay, Dr. Duran. Okay, subject clear mind is stain. Buddha subject clear mind. Then subjective subject clear light mind in general. It is not necessarily without stain. It can have stains because we ordinary beings like us with the techniques, with some techniques, we can invoke the subject clear light mind, and yet we are not Buddhas. We still have the stains right okay this is a good point anyone else okay what about buddha subjective mind which is not objective clear mind buddha subjective clear mind which is not objective clear mind does it have does it have stains oh that's <laughs> Which means he's not Buddha. He still has the stains. Yes, both, yes. This is what I'm saying. Subjective clear mind is never objective clear mind. In any case. Right? For example, it is like saying it is like saying human being. Human being is never a chocolate. Right, you don't just say human being which is not chocolate. You don't have to say that. Human being means by definition is not a chocolate. Maybe for lines is chocolate. Right? Okay. The girl here, your name? Maho, yes. So it has subtle it has stains or not? It has stains. Gross minds dissolved. So the stains are there. The Buddha subject clear mind. What about the Buddha subject clear mind? Does it have stain? Just say yes, no. 
No. But according to your reason, Buddha's, Buddha's subjective mind is freed from the gross minds. It's very subtle. So it has subtle stains. So Buddha's mind is subtle stain. <laughs> Okay, Marco, if she learns debate or she learns the logic, she will learn it very quickly. Because she could identify her mistakes very quickly. And she said, no, <laughs> right? Okay, good. Okay, good now. So, but this is what I'm saying is that the, what we need to know is that the, um, the default mind which has capacity to do, improve to enlightenment, that is known as proliferating Buddha nature, and then the emptiness of that proliferated Buddha nature is the natural Buddha nature. Are you getting it? Okay. Good. Um, now, let me explain to you that um, the, what happens if you practice the wisdom of emptiness? Well, complemented by bodhicitta. With the power of the intuition bodhicitta, you practice the wisdom of emptiness so well, what hap what happened? So what happens is that the um, what happens is that your mind, your proliferating Buddha nature will continue to grow, 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 and then become the Buddha's mind. You're getting it? Buddha's mind. And your say natural Buddha nature, the the emptiness, emptiness of the Emptiness of, of the proliferating Buddha nature. So that will become the natural dharmakaya of the Buddha. You're getting it? Natural dharmakaya of the Buddha. Okay, what does it mean by natural dharmakaya of the Buddha? This is a question. Okay. Let me explain like this. Say, finally, what's the, the, the purpose of the Buddha? To benefit the sentient beings. Right? And let's say that the, let's say the human being, the, let's say the sentient beings, they are like the, the seeds. The seeds, sentient beings, they are like the seeds. And the seeds have to be germinated, have to grow. And in, in order for the seeds to germinate, we require the rain, rain water, right? Let's say rain water. Okay, don't argue with me with the, you know, pump water and so forth. So let's say rain water, right? Usually the farmers wait for the rain water. So now, rainwater is like the activities of the Buddhas showered on the seeds of the sentient beings. So the sentient beings sprout into beautiful crops. So the rain is so important. Rain is the, the metaphor for the Buddha's activities of benefited beings. So these rain should happen from, from the cloud. The cloud. And the cloud should be formed from the water vapors. Cloud from the cloud is formed in the space. You're getting it? So what we require is we require the space. That space where the cloud is formed, that space is the metaphor for your natural thermakaya. Natural thermakaya. From this, from this, then the cloud is formed. The cloud is formed. That is in the form of the that is in the form of the the Buddha's bodies or the Buddha's mind, Buddha's mind, which is the pure mind, our proliferating Buddha nature, which became the Buddha's mind. Buddha's mind in general, Buddha's mental consciousness, is is known as the wisdom dharmakaya. So let me let me repeat it. Say, we require the space for the cloud to be formed. So this, the space is a metaphor, the space, open space is a metaphor for the natural dharmakaya. Then within the natural dharma, within the space, then the cloud is formed. That cloud is a metaphor for the wisdom dharmakaya, Buddha's mind. Wisdom dharmakaya. From the wisdom dharmakaya, then the rain shower. These are the deeds and act beneficial deeds of the Buddhas to benefit the beings. And the rains shower on the seeds. And seeds are the metaphor for the sentient beings. So the seeds meet with the rain of the Buddha's deeds and then the seeds grow to germinate into 
the desirable crops. Okay, in desirable crops. Desi desirable crops to eat food. Crops. Okay, so the the point is that that say the, the vast expense of the, the space is required. That is like the that is like that is the metaphor for the natural dharmakaya. From this expanse of the 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 space, with the emptiness of Buddha's mind, that Buddha's mind is emerge out of the space. The Buddha's mind emerge. It's not like space first, then the Buddha's mind emerge. No, these two are simultaneous. Look at the Buddha's mind from the ultimate analysis. It's the emptiness of Buddha's mind. From the conventional analysis, you see the Buddha's mind. You're getting it. So these two are the, the like these two are synonymous, not synonymous. These two are these two coexist. But for us to understand that in simple ways, so that gradually your understanding goes deeper, the ground is that that okay. So the the space is very important. Then because of the space, it allows the, the it allows the the clouds to be formed. Because of the cloud, then the rains happen. You're getting it? So we see how they are connected, how they are very important. Some people, because if this is how you don't learn, then the danger is that when you speak about the emptiness of the mind as the natural Buddha guy, um, natural Buddha nature, many people think that it doesn't make any sense. What is the emptiness? Everything has emptiness, you know? So this is why many people, they don't understand the depth of this. So the emptiness of the Buddha's mind or emptiness of our proliferating Buddha nature is so important. Important. When you see this emptiness of Buddha's mind, this is the, the true reality. True reality. When you see that, then the mental defilements are removed. Are removed. Are removed. And the proliferating Buddha nature becomes purer, purer, and purer. By seeing what? By seeing the natural Buddha nature within us. What is the natural Buddha nature? Emptiness of the proliferating Buddha nature. When you meditate on this, then the proliferating Buddha nature starts to proliferate. You know, starts to become starts to become cleaner, cleaner, cleaner. Why? Because natural Buddha nature is the emptiness of the product of Buddha, Buddha nature. And the mind we see that is the wisdom seeing the emptiness of the mind. Wisdom seeing the emptiness of the mind by meditating on this removes the mental defilements. When the mental defilements are removed, your mind goes closer and closer towards Buddhahood. You're getting it? So therefore, the, the, the meditating on the natural Buddha nature helps the the proliferating Buddha nature to become cleaner, 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 and to go closer, closer to us, enlightenment. You got it? Any questions? Any questions? Yes. Yes. Mental defilements. Not everything is removed. Mental defilements are removed. Yes. Okay, emptiness of the proliferating Buddha nature. Is that permanent or not? That is permanent. Okay. With, in the eyes of conversion analysis, these two things happen together. What you call as, huh? I'm also not too clear. <laughs> but I'm trying to give the answer. In the, in the process of giving the answer, if she says, yes, I'm happy. You're getting it? I'm, even I'm not too sure about it, her question, right? So don't worry, don't worry. So they, they don't disturb this Shamba. <laughs> so they, it'll become very long. Okay, let me explain. Let me explain and see if you agree with me. If you don't agree, ask me again. You're getting it? Okay, then don't disturb me. Buddha nature, yes. Yes. So. 
exactly this is what i'm saying so they what they what the uh it is saying is that say on one hand we are talking about the national botanicia on the other hand we are talking about the national botanicia proliferating botanicia national botanicia with the national with the proliferate botanicia proliferate 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 grow 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 right acquire more 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 qualities national botanicia remove 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 because empty you know to reveal the true nature remove yes it's already there emptiness right so one removes and other gathers so these two how they two can go together i say i say that these two coexist you're getting it it's not that you have to go for one you have to go for both together in the eyes of the ultimate analysis you have to remove to dissolve all objective existence in the eyes of conventional analysis you have to gather you have to improve your bodhicitta, generosity, ethical discipline, patience, enthusiasm, all the good qualities, you keep increasing them in the eyes of the convention analysis, where proliferative potential increases. And in the ultimate analysis, you see the, uh, the ultimate, the, what is that? National potential more and more clearly. So these two coexist. You happy? Both ways. Okay, so the, um, the we have yes. In fact, the thing is that the if you practice, say you meditate on the the national Buddha nature, national Buddha nature, then the both things ha happen simultaneously. That you national Buddha nature becomes clearer, clearer, clearer. Removing, remove objective existence becomes clearer, clearer, clearer. And then meanwhile, your proliferative Buddha nature keeps growing, growing, growing. Is to happen simultaneously. Fine, is it? No, if you say if you're happy, just say yes, so that they'll be happy. Contemplate more. Are you good? Yes. The qualities, good positive qualities. Yes. Exactly, yes. There's no stain. No, the point is that we have to meditate on the national Buddha nature. So that way, Sangye. Sang means remove, eliminate what it is said. Remove, eliminate. Ge is proliferate. So, Sangye is the um, same the two activities happening within the individual remove the mental defilements and proliferating your good, good positive qualities sangye when when these when these two activities reach the consummation or completion then you are known as the full the full flesh version of sang and ge which means that you become sangye you become buddha Right? So for, for these two activities to happen, what should you do? What should you do? You have to proliferate your proliferating Buddha nature. How to do that? By meditating on the national Buddha nature. Okay, Mikhail. Objective Buddha nature. Yes. That's a good question. Objective clear light mind and the national Buddha nature. Are these two synonymous? Anyone? Think, think. I don't think that, okay. No, two different things. Now I'm confused. Don't think like this. Just think. Give yourself a thought. And if the clarity is not coming, don't worry. At least think. When you think, you're activating Buddha nature. If you don't think, if you give up, your Buddha nature is deep hidden down. It'll never come up. Think. Okay, Ashwin. Perfect. Therefore, can you give an example? Don't say synonymous. Emptiness a table 
is as object clear light but it is not the buddha nature why it is not the buddha nature because it is not the emptiness of the mind it is the emptiness of the table the buddha nature natural buddha nature should necessarily be the emptiness of your mind particularly the emptiness of the proliferating buddha nature there is no object of clear mind objective clear light by the very it is like saying i said michael chocolate there's no michael chocolate michael means non chocolate you're getting it objective clear light means non mind already subjective clear light mind you can add this word subjective clear light mind mind you can add to subjective clear light but not to the objective clear light okay mother Uh, what should I do? Not tell it, or not elaborate it? You are reminding me not to elaborate on this. Okay, so not just emptiness of mind. Elaborate the emptiness of mind. Okay, that we'll do a little later. When I say a little later, your job is to constantly remind me. You getting it? <laughs> okay. Yes. Lethal, lethal. Okay. Say it again. Is there any phenomena which is permanent? Emptiness. No, mind is not permanent. Emptiness permanent. Emptiness permanent. Is there anybody who can explain how emptiness is permanent? This is a very good question. Thank you. Now this is job of the NMC one, NMC two, NDC one, two, three, four. Right? Hey, anyone? How is MTNS permanent? Reasons? Okay, okay. Thamale, let's say. Okay, is the mic? Yes. Yes. It is negative phenomena, but how is it permanent phenomena? Okay, the the the, the mic. Please pass it to. Oh, you don't need a mic. Yeah, the voice is bigger than the mic. <laughs> yes, how is emptiness permanent? Oh, you don't look at me. So, uh, Lethal should be happy. Okay, the question is, how is emptiness of the book, how is it that it does not have substance? How? So, no, why moment to moment change is not happening is because it doesn't have substance. How, it, how is it that it doesn't have substance? NMC1, NMC2, NMC, NDC1234, reasons? Okay, let's say Ornella. <laughs> First, tell me which, which class? NDC 1, 2, 3, 4, only NMC 2, not NDC, never, oh, we just type the NMC 2, tell me. Mike, Mike, Mike.
Okay, non affirming negative, yes. Yes. How? How it doesn't have substance? Okay, that's a good point. Yes, it makes good good sense, but clarity should come out. Clarity should come out. Anyone? Okay, Philip, you're from NMC, NTC? No? Anyone else? Okay, Rimbila. Rimbila, you introduce yourself. All the degrees. And this NMC one? And this one? And this two? And this three? <laughs> NMC2, yes, okay, many degrees, okay. <laughs> okay. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? Argaji from NMC2, NMC1, 2, NMC, NMC one, two three. NCC 1, 2, 3, no. NMC 2, yes. NCC 1. NRC 2, yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, yes. Yes, no, no, family negative. That's interesting. Okay. This is a very important statement that he made. Agraji made. Non-affirming negative should necessarily necessarily be not composite phenomena. In other words, non-affirming negative should necessarily be non-composite phenomena. Okay, this is a very important statement, and very important, I mean it. It's a very important statement she made, he made. That's correct. Yes. Very good statement. Anyone else who likes to? Yes. NMC 1, 2. Then wait. This is the privilege of the NTC 1, 2, 3. Okay, here, Dr. Thumb. Which one? NMC 1, 2, NTC 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, yes. Very good. So what Dr. Tham said is very good. I don't know how many of you could, you understood what she said, but she made a very important point. So in a way, what Dr. Tham is saying is that the, what, first we have to listen to what Dr. Tham has to say. Once that is done, then what Tamali said, Rimbala said, and Argaji said, and anyone else? Who said anyone else who added? Okay, so what Dr. Tham said is that, for example, let's say, that what is there? You will say there's a flower there, and I say what is my right hand? There's nothing there. Is there a flower? No. Absence of flowers there? Yes. So in my left hand there's a flower. In my right hand there's absence of the flower. Absence of the flower I means flower being empty, emptiness. You know empty okay so don't forget don't think about emptiness for the time just think of absence of the flower so what's the difference between these two items on the one hand on my, the left hand i have the flower on my right hand absence of flowers there absence of flower so with the flower there's a substance there to say i am the flower there's a substance there 
with the absence of flower, there's nothing there. there. There's no substance to tell you that I am the absence of flower. Do you agree? Good. If you agree with this, then the absence, all absence follow the same rule. All absence, all absences. Absence of objective existence. Just as absence of flower does not have a substance, absence of permanence, absence of chocolate, absence of objective existence, they all, they don't have substance. For example, here, do you, what, do you, what is in my right hand? Nothing. When you say nothing means there's no substance there. There's no substance. But don't forget, don't change your mind to say, when you said there's no substance, absence of flowers there, they thought absence of substance, the absence of flowers there. Yes, so absence of flower, it is, it is there, but it's not substance because you said that there's no substance in my hand. So if there's no substance in my hand, whatever exists in my hand should not be without, it should be without substance. So absence of flower should be without substance. So by this, if you understand how the absence of flower is without substance, absence of anything should be without substance. Absence of flower, absence of chocolate, absence of objective existence, without substance. Absence of objective existence is known as emptiness. Emptiness of objective existence, so that is without substance. Now, if one has substance, what does not have substance, what's the difference? What has substance undergoes change on its own. There's no substance there to undergo change. For example, let's say we keep this flower in this room, and you think of the absence of flower in this room, both leaf is here and you leave. You go to have your, and they say your lunch, dinner, and then you may not come to the room, to this house at all for the next 10 days. In the next 10 days, this flower will wither because there was a change happening. With the absence of flower, it will not wither. Right? So this flower withers. Why this wither and the absence of flower does not wither? Because for the flower, there's a substance there which keeps undergoing change. Whereas the absence of flower does not have a substance which does not undergo change. So therefore, it does, there's, no, there's no connotation to say that it withers. It doesn't wither. So emptiness is the absence of the absence, absence of objective existence. And that does not have a substance. Because it doesn't have a substance, it does not have the substance to undergo change. So it does not have a change. If it does not undergo change, it is not impermanent. If it, is not it exists, it is not impermanent, it should be permanent. Okay, good. Any more questions? Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay, is there any other examples? NMC, NDC1? Okay, here. Non composite space. You happy? Not happy. Okay, don't say no, just say how is it permanent? Ask. Yes. Uh, anyone? Anyone? How is it permanent? Okay, yes. Flower in the space is permanent. Oh, -ho. flower in the space. Does it exist or not? It doesn't exist. What is permanent or impermanent should be the classification of what exists. Okay, anyone else? Yes, Carl. Okay, so absence of abstraction is what? It's a non composite space. So, so how is it permanent? <laughs> okay, <laughs> so Carl is giving homework to you. You're getting it? So Carl is saying that what is it? Okay, by the way, what is the non composite space? Absence of? Obstruction. How is it non composite space? This is very important. So what Carl said is correct. Only thing is that we should make the other person be convinced, right? So they should not be, they should, they should all seamlessly connected. Okay. This is a very important statement. non composite space, and what is, the, what is that? Absence of obstruction. Okay, let me, how many of you like to know that? Raise hands. Okay, this is a very important concept. Okay, let's say, 
that um if somebody is sitting just in front of you right if somebody sitting just in front of you two three four five people around you if i said if i said stretch your arm in the front would you stretch your arm in the front you would not because that because why because you know that your hands will be obstructed by the presence of the other person you're getting it okay now you stretch your arms in front of you hey marka Parka, stretch your arms. Well, she's reluctant, you know. <laughs> no, I said, I said now. Now meaning, you're getting it, change, shift your mind. Right, shift your mind and stretch your arm in front. Do it, do it. Okay, you freely do it. Right? Omega Ji, you freely do it, right? You freely do it. Very good. What gave you the conf what gave you the confidence that there is no obstruction in front of you? What gave you the confidence? I can see that there's a space there. You're getting it? I can see the space that your eyes could see. That space is known as composite space. The space that you see between your eyes and in front, there's a space there. Okay, I can freely move my hand in the front because I could see the space there. What your eyes could see validly, that is known as composite space. That is known as composite space. You're getting it? Now, the composite space means it should be impermanent. Composite spaces, impermanent. For example, like, what is this? This flower. Flower is a composite phenomena. It is impermanent. You're getting it? But this flower has many isolates. This flower has many isolates. Likewise, the composite space that you can see between you and I, that space, it has many isolates. Just as this flower, which is impermanent, the composite space is also permanent. Both have numerous the isolates. Okay, tell me, for this um, with this flower, what kind of isolates does it have? This flower. The color petals, it being not a chocolate. It's not a chocolate, right? It's also this being absent of permanence, this is being absent of objective. They're all the isolates of this flower. Yes? Yes? Hey, don't don't be dazed. So this flower has many attributes that is it's not chocolate, it's absent being chocolate, absent being objective existence, it has color, it is impermanent, it is existent. There are so many isolates. And of these isolates, you just select one isolate, the absence, the absence of the chocolate, absence of the objective existence. So absences are without substance. Right? Likewise, the <clears throat> The space between you and me, which you can see, that space is what composite or non-composite. It's a composite. It's a composite space. It is permanent or impermanent. It is impermanent. But this space has many isolates. Like this space is not chocolate, right? This space. This space is absent of obstruction. Absent. Absence of obstruction. So that isolate of the absence of obstruction, that isolate, if you take it out, that isolate of the absence of the obstruction, that is known as the non composite. It is that absence is that non composite or composite? Non composite. That is known as, that is given the label non composite space. You're getting it? Non composite space. When you say non composite space, don't think of how you think of the composite space. Oh, there's a space in this hall. Actually, you are thinking of the composite space and you give a label non composite space. This is where we go wrong. So, non composite space, it has a very specific meaning. The composite space, which has many isolates, one of which is the absence of obstruction. That isolate of the absence of obstruction, which Carl said, that is the non composite space and that is permanent. Good? Okay. The composite space has many isolates, one of which is the absence of 
obstruction. That it doesn't obstruct you. Absence of obstruction. The isolate of the absence of obstruction, that is the non-composite space. Absence of obstruction. Absence of obstruction is the non-composite space. Absence of obstruction, that is absence. Absence is always non-composite. And that is that at that isolate is precisely labeled as non-composite space. Absence of obstruction. Good? Yes. Mm. Mm. Okay, so the I don't know whether I got you correctly. Let me say something and if it makes sense to you. Okay. Um what we do is that we in a way you're you're talking about the sun gay. So there I say that we need to see that mental deformity is removed and the good qualities proliferate. This is what we should be doing. For that matter, when you meditate on the the natural Buddha nature, emptiness of proliferating Buddha nature, the mental deformity are removed. So meanwhile, for the proliferating Buddha nature to grow, we need to also engage in other practices like generosity, ethical discipline, and so forth. Is what I'm saying? Okay. Is, is this, this statement correct? Answer is absolutely correct. Absolutely correct. We have to both, we have to engage in all these practices. Cleansing the mental defilements, increasing good qualities. You're getting it? But these two should not be seen as completely isolated from each other. Right? For the ordinary people like us, we have to do them separately. But as you become realized at a certain point, then it is like, say, the um, okay. So, Dawala, your, ha your hairpin, give it to me. If it's okay. Yes. Okay. Let's see what's happening. Right. Right. Now I pull. There are how many how many flies? One, two, three, four flies there, right? Initially, our Dharma practice initially for beginners like us, it is like pulling one, only one comes. Not all four comes. Right? Whereas when you at a certain very high level of the realization, you pull one. Okay, now come. Quick, quick, quick. Okay. From here, pull the top, gradually pull the top. Pull the top. Pull, 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 pull. No, no, don't, don't just push the others. Just pull the first one. No, push, don't push the others. You, you're pushing the others. Just pull like this. Pull like this, slowly pull, pull. It doesn't matter. Pull, 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 pull. What happened? All the four came along. You're getting it? Okay, take it back. <clears throat> so, initial stage, when you pull one, only one comes. Whereas with some emptiness, your wisdom emptiness improves initially, right? Generosity, ethical discipline, patience, they don't automatically increase. And you practice generosity, generosity, generosity increase. Emptiness, wisdom, wisdom emptiness doesn't increase. They all come the one by one. But at a certain point, when you're able to link all these things through your practice, then you practice wisdom emptiness, all the other good qualities incre automatically increase. You practice generosity, in practice with generosity, all the other, including wisdom emptiness, grows at a certain level. So that is known as where you practice one perfection, all the other perfections are subsumed under this practice. So the training, there's a specific training for that. For example, generosity. When you're engaging in generosity, say active generosity, within that, all six professions can be incorporated. Say you 
give um say you have somebody like giving some chocolate or giving some money or whatever when you give that <clears throat> act of giving that is generosity do that with do that with the let's say that the so uh, make sure that the other person doesn't feel offended if you say okay you want a flower take it just throw it other person will feel offended you know, offer it with respect so this is ethics not offending others too then they say okay i've run for my breakfast right but then this person asking for you know there's the flower or some money i have to do for my money it takes time so impatient builds up no 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 this person this is very important so you're being patient although somebody said calling you right okay then shundala how do other people call you Oh, purely, purely, come, 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 come for the breakfast, breakfast, right? So still you are very calm, right? Calm and being patient with the generosity. So generosity, ethical tips, discipline, patience. And then you do it out of joy, enthusiasm. And then when you give it, give it fully focus on this, not just deviated your mind, distracted here and there, meditation. And then seeing that even this person who received my generosity, that is also like illusion. That I, the benefactor, is also like illusion. What the object with which you, which I am giving, that's also illusion. Act of generosity is also illusion. The wisdom. You're getting it? So within the same act of generosity, all six professions can, can be incorporated. So if we practice like this, gradually, automatically, you see, you don't have to even think. Just by generosity, automatically, these six practices are, are enriched within yourself. So therefore, that the it, this happens for the bodhisattvas, bodhisattvas who deliberately practice like this. For them, everything becomes so rich. Just you know, the, the laughing at somebody or smiling at somebody, all six perfections are incorporated. Okay, good. Yes. Yes. Okay, so what this girl is saying is that the flower on the one hand and the emptiness of flower on the other hand, what we said is that the flower is made of substance and the flower does not have substance. Now, she is adding another element to this, saying that the flower can be say, is it all right to say that the flower, which is a composite phenomenon, it, it has a, a, the causal factor involved, whereas for the emptiness of emptiness of flower, does not involve a causal factor. Is this your question? Okay. So, what is the answer? Many good questions are coming up. We only need people to help me with answers um, okay for this what I will say is that again for NMC 1 NMC 2 and this is 1 2 3 4 right others I can't expect if you give if you have answers perfectly well if not it's okay but in NMC 1 NMC 2 you'll be under penalty you're getting it okay so the answer is that answer is that say so what is a composite phenomenon Composite phenomena, impermanent phenomena, product, functional phenomena, and then the cause, effect, they're all synonymous. What is a composite phenomena it should necessarily be a cause. It should necessarily be a result also. You're getting it? So result means it should be caused by, it should be contributed by a cause. So it should fulfill the first level of dependent origination. What is the first level of dependent origination? Look, this girl is saying that I never learned these three levels of dependent origination in this class. Three levels of dependent origination. Okay, how many heard it somewhere? How many heard it somewhere? Raise hands. Somewhere? 
Verma, tell me where? Where did you hear this? Here, right? Maybe in the morning first session? Morning in the morning the prayer session? 5.45? Maybe 5.45 because this girl was absent. 5.45, she was absent, yeah. The, 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 there was a problem with the alarm. Is any note there? Three levels of dependent origination. <laughs> yes. Okay, it is there. Yes. Okay, when did you write it? In sleep? Okay. So your question is very good. Your question is very good. In fact, you can correlate many things. That is amazing. It is not something somebody has given the idea. So it, this thought came to you, somehow correlating. It's very precious. So the point is that what is a composite phenomena should necessarily have a causal factor. What you said is correct. What is a non-composite phenomenon is freed from causal factor. It does not have any causal factor involved. What you said is correct. Okay, anyone? Okay. Din Shambhala, yes. Din Shambhala, yes. Buddha Nisha, yes. Buddha Nisha, yes. Yes. It's not natural Buddha Nature. No, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. If I say that if I say that this is this room is Tenshamba's room, right? Finish. Don't ask why this is not somebody else's room. You're getting it? And then well, I can change it. Say this is now Tenshamba. Now you finish the retreat, go. This will go by somebody else. So likewise, say for example, what is this? Why this is not chocolate? Ah, exactly. So convention means we have to know things very precisely and give labels. So emptiness of the proliferating Buddha nature, that is given the label natural Buddha nature. You're getting it? Natural Buddha nature. This is the point. So therefore, anything else like emptiness of other things, other objects, they're not natural Buddha nature. Why? Why? The point is that the... Um, Okay, for this we need to explain a little bit about the enlightened state. When you become a Buddha, what happens? I briefly touched with the example, the space and the cloud and the rain. Just the metaphor I've given. But in actuality, what happens is that your mind, when you become a Buddha, your mind, your mind, not the increase of the self-grasping ignorance, but the increase of your proliferated Buddha nature of the past. So that mind is like the the, the, what is that? The, the cloud. So that mind needs a space, which means the emptiness of that cloud, emptiness of that mind. So that emptiness of the mind is like a continuum of the emptiness of the proliferating Buddha nature, because that mind is the continuum of the proliferating Buddha nature, not the self grasping ignorance. You get something? Good. Okay. Yes. Okay, a little slow down. Yes. Okay, no, what you said is amazing. Only thing is that my mind works slow. <laughs> You're getting it? <laughs> so what is said, what is said is that the, the space is a metaphor, the cloud is a metaphor, the rain is a metaphor for the Buddhas, say the natural, the Dharmakaya, wisdom Dharmakaya, and the rain, the activities of the Buddha, and then the, that part is the Buddha part. That I understood you very clearly. Now next part of ascension being. Ascension being the seeds, then what? 
coexist meaning sentient beings and Buddhas. It coexists hundred percent. Yes, then. Conventional sentient beings are not seeds. They are not seed. We are not seed. You are not apple seed. You are not apple. Ah, uh, salt seeds. Who said it? Okay, that's very profound, <laughs> right? So I don't want to reject easily. I don't want to accept easily, right? I just want to absorb more. Same, cease. Sentient being cease at one point. At what point? And why did you bring this up? When the Buddha's rain shower, sentient beings grow, proliferating Buddha nature grow, mental defilement is gone. At that point, the sentient being cease to become a Buddha. Yes. Then, becoming a Buddha and sentient being ceasing, these two are simultaneous. 100% yes. So what was your question? Okay, very good. Okay, Ashwin. Okay, very good questions. Okay, anybody who can help me, now I cannot run away. <laughs> right, it's already time, time for a break, half an hour gone, right? So, but I cannot run away because there are good questions coming up. Anybody who can help me, quick. Does it mean that the subject clay light mind of the sentient beings, beings have stains? Okay, only here or where? In group discussion. Here. Are you sure who said it? I said it. Don't leave this hall. Did you say that? He did not say this. You're getting, I did not say this. Anyone? Okay, to make it short. It's quite a tricky question. Why tricky question? I don't suppose, unless you are from NMC2, I don't suppose you will, we can, I cannot 100% be sure, but I, I can suppose so that you will not get the answer. The question is that, and the point is that, say, Ashwin him or you, each one of you, you're meditating on this, you're meditating on the, what? Natural Dharmakaya. Emptiness of your product for Buddha nature. So as you meditate more and more, then Gade, Gade, Paragade, Parasamgade, you reach that level, let's say, Parasangade. What is that? The path of meditation. You reach that level. So when that, when you reach that level, your mental defilements are constantly being removed and your proliferating Buddha nature keeps becoming cleaner, cleaner, more and more purified, which means more less and less stained. So his question is, does it mean that the subject clear light matter of the sentient being is without with stain or without stain? This question, right? So your proliferating Buddha nature, that becomes more and more purified, more and more, less and less with stain. So this mind, when it sees the emptiness directly, directly, I would say that even if you see emptiness directly, this question about this subject, for the time being, let's say subject clear light, because it's the, the debate between the, the sutra system and the tantra system. Okay, let's make it very simple. Let's say that there's seeing emptiness directly in the form of gade gade paragate parasangate. So there, you're meditating on the National Dharmakaya, which is the emptiness of the product for the Buddha nature. And because of this, your metal stains are removed. And proliferated Buddha nature, which seeing the emptiness directly, becomes more and more pure. You're getting it? Pure. And then you reach to the point, point last moment of being a sentient being. What these are saying. Last moment of being a sentient being. The next moment, you ceased to be sentient being. Which means next moment, you become a Buddha. So last moment, at that point, your Buddha nature, your the subject clear the mind is so pure, extremely pure. You're getting it, but it is not yet Buddha. It's, it requires just one moment of practice, then it moves to the Buddhahood. So that moment, that moment, your subject clear the mind does it have stain? This is question. So all the remaining all have stains. 
गते गते स्टेन्स फार गते स्टेन्स फार संग गते दे आर थेन लेवल्स थेन भूमिज एंड द फर्स्ट नाइन भूमिज दे हैव स्टेन्स द लास्ट भूमि विथ इन द लास्ट भूमि द लास्ट विथ इन लास्ट भूमि विथ इन दैट द लास्ट मोमेंट देर इज अ टाइम द स्टेन इज नॉट देर बट यू डोंट हैव द कॉन्फिडेंस द कॉन्फिडेंस ऑफ द इट इज लाइक ओके द से दैट Like there's uh, the robber who broke in your room, in your house. So you, what do you do? You fight with the robber and throw him out, right? You throw the robber out. Now in your room, it, 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 does it have the robber? It does not have the robber. But because you are yet to put the latch on, robber can still come in. So when will the when your mind will be totally relaxed, confident that the robber will not come back when you latch? So the last moment of ascension being before the ascension being ceased to be ascension being that moment stain is removed, but the confidence has to be built like latching on, putting on the latch on. So that the moment you put in the latch on, you become a Buddha. You're getting it. So the last moment of ascension being subjective clarity of mind, it does not have. stains but you don't have the state of the cessation the stains state of the cessation meaning you have the confidence that confidence is not yet built very good question thank you okay argaji last question yes would you mind sharing with us what kind of problem if not full uh huh You sneeze and you solve the, the mass problem. <laughs> That idea came. Okay. The, uh, okay. I got a question. How many got a question? Okay. Answer. I don't know whether the I don't know. Don't accept easily. Don't reject easily. Right. I don't know. I'll not reject easily. I'll not accept easily. But what I will say is that. according to the standard text when you sneeze when you yawn deep sleep on some occasions the subject clear light gets activated once in a while not always once in a while it does get activated when it gets activated does it mean that you are say the confused your ignorance they cleared not sure but what you experience that is your personal experience which is so precious for you so precious we cannot deny this we cannot accept it easily but for individuals whatever experience that you get whatever whatever experience you get generally speaking you advise to maintain them confidential at the same time when it comes to your teacher you can share these because given confidence and not getting cleared up but it is is very it, it may not be too healthy also so keep it confidential but so for somebody who you regard as your teacher right not to anybody but who regard you as a teacher and with whom you really build a report good report in terms of say the you trust through various observations you trust the person as a teacher you share and you seek advice from the person and of course the person should be learned but you have the experience you're getting it some people who are not learned then they what they say can be very disastrous some people who are not experienced what they say can be totally dry intellectual information not experiential they may not even be able to relate to what you're saying you getting it so these are things that we need to keep in mind okay we'll stop here deyata <clears throat> om gate gate par gate par sam gate bhati swahatyata Om Gati Gati Par Gati Par Sam Gati Bodhi Swaha
ಪಾತ್ಯಥ ಓಂ ಗತಿ ಗತಿ ಪಾರಗತಿ ಪಾರ ಸಂಗತಿ ಬೋಧಿ ಸ್ವಾ ಶ್ರೀ ಪ್ರಶಸ್ತ